In the beginning, there was God. The earth was empty and dark. God looked over the surface of the world. It was time for something to happen. Let there be light. And the earth became light. I shall call the light day and the darkness night. And so there had been darkness and then light. And that was the world's very first day. Now, God was just getting started. The next thing to do was to make the sky above the world and to fill the sky with clouds. And that was the second day of the world. On the third day, God separated the water from the dry land. God made all kinds of things to put on the land. There were rocks and mountains, valleys, deserts, and beaches. There were big islands and little islands. There were oceans and seas, rivers and lakes. But there was still more to come on the third day because God wasn't done yet. It was time to make all the plants. God made tall trees and short bushes, vines, ferns, leaves and flowers. God gave all the flowers a different size, color, shape, and smell. And all the grasses and plants and trees that make seeds and fruits were made on the third day too. On the fourth day, God made a brilliant light in the sky called the sun to light up the day. And a silvery one called the moon to add some light to the nighttime. And as a special touch, God added billions of twinkling stars to the night. On the fifth day, God made some creatures to live in this beautiful world. There were birds, and more birds. and more birds. And in the rivers and oceans and seas and lakes, God made fish. And the oceans were full of all sorts of amazing creatures. And 
that was the end of the fifth day. But there was still a lot more for God to do. On the sixth day, it was time to make the rest of the animals. There were so many animals to make. Big animals, and small animals. There were spotted animals. and horned animals. God's animals was beautiful. Now, on this sixth day, God did something else that was very important. God created the first man. And that man was called Adam. Then God blew the breath of life right into Adam. Where am I? Welcome to the world, Adam. Who are you? I am God. Look around you. All the plants of the earth and all their seeds and all their fruits, I give them to you. And all the animals, you have power over them as well. Everything is yours to use, to care for, and protect. God looked over everything and was happy. And on the seventh day, God rested. Ah, it is very good. <laughs> now, God wanted Adam to live in the most wonderful place that could ever be. So God planted a beautiful garden for Adam to live in. It was called the Garden of Eden. God made a great river run through the garden, and then the river split into four great rivers. Adam had all the animals for company in the garden. Well, uh, uh, excuse me. Adam's first job was to name all the animals. 
this new request from God sounds like it's quite a job. I'm going to be as busy as a, a bee. I've got to search my brain and come up with a name for every living, breathing thing I see. You with the large brown spots eating from treetops, your neck is the biggest part of you. Twisting round so easily, I believe your name will be Stretchy. Now that's pretty catchy. Or perhaps Giraffe will do. The jungle must belong to one so fierce and strong. I shiver and tremble at your growl. So you with the flowing mane, I give you the kingly name, Rory. No, that fits you poorly. Maybe lion is fine for now. Those flippy flappy things, I think I'll call them wings. And creatures they're attached to will be birds. The red breast will be robin, ostrich that big odd one. Parrot is the clawed one who repeats all my words. I'd say your fancy shell protects you very well, although it can slow you down a bit. So you with the scaly skin, I name you and all your kin. Pokey, not nah, too hokey. No, your wordle be turtle. Yeah, just right. The swimmers in the sea will mostly fishes be, with whale and snail and lobster one and all. The orange one is goldfish. Cod, the ice cold fish. Tadpole has the bold wish of one day being thrown. The way you jump around, you hardly touch the ground and scamper so fast you're just a blur. So you with the cotton tail, you'll be known on every trail as Hopper. No, that's not proper. Oh, I have it, your rabbit for sure. It's still early in the day, and I'm well on my way to naming every animal I know. Why, there's only half a million more to go. Looks like you've got a dear friend. I'd like to have a friend too. There were many animals to name. Adam grew very tired of trying to decide what to call each one. Now, God looked down on Adam sleeping there in the garden, and Adam looked very alone. Hmm. And God decided that Adam needed a companion, someone to be with. God decided it was time to make another person. So God created woman. What? Hello. Uh, hello. I mean, uh, hi. I mean, ah, uh, shucks. Where am I? You're in God's garden, the Garden of Eden. It's really nice here, you'll see. These are my friends, this is Monkey, and this is Dog, and this is, um, I haven't named you yet, have I? Gee, I guess you need a name too, don't you? How do you like Eve? Oh, it's lovely. Eve, I like it, and I like this place. Me too. You see, God made this garden for me. I mean, us, to live in. And everything's pretty, and you can eat anything you want, and... Not quite. Who was that? That was God. Oh. God's the one who made us. There is one fruit in all the garden that you may not eat. There is? This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. 
You may eat of anything else in the garden, but you may not eat the fruit from this tree. Okay, tree of knowledge of good and evil. No eating. Absolutely no eating. Right. Anything else in the garden is okay, but not that tree. Definitely not that tree. Right. And so Adam and Eve lived very happily in the Garden of Eden, until one day. I'm so happy, life's a breeze, picking fruit from off the trees. La 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 la. Howdy. Oh, you startled me. Hello. What are you called? Why, I'm a serpent. Nice to meet ya. <laughs> nice to meet you, too. Nice day, isn't it? A very nice day. Nice tree, isn't it? A very nice tree. Nice fruit. Uh, um... I have to go now. No, you don't. We're just getting to know each other. You don't want to hurt my feelings, do you? Uh, no. Good, because I want us to be very good friends. Now, as I was saying, it's nice fruit, isn't it? You can eat it, you know. Eat what? You know what I'm talking about. The fruit of this tree. You can eat it. <laughs> the fruit of this tree? No, I can't eat that. Sure you can. It's easy. It tastes great. We're not allowed to eat that. God said so. God said we'd be in big trouble if we ate that fruit. Nah, you won't be in trouble. God just doesn't want you to eat the fruit from this tree. Because if you eat it, you'll get smart. Like God. What's the matter? Are you a chicken? I'm not a chicken. Well then, why not give it a shot? Just one teeny tiny taste. God probably won't even notice. And this fruit, I'm telling you, is incredible. Um, no, I really can't. I'll never tell. Try it. Well... If it won't kill me, and it'll make me smart, maybe just one tiny taste. Sort of a lick, not even a bite, really. Oh, how bad could that be? Wow! Pretty good, huh? I've got to tell Adam about this. Adam! Adam! You'll never guess what just happened. What? You know the fruit? Which fruit? You know, the one we weren't supposed to eat. What about it? You didn't, did you? I did. Eve, how could you? Adam, it's great. 
I want you to try it too. That serpent over there told me all about it. I just took a little bite, that's all. But Eve will really get it if we eat that fruit. I didn't get it, did I? I, uh, I guess not. Just take a tiny bite. God's probably not even looking. Oh, go ahead. I don't know. It was good, but suddenly I feel kind of scared. I just feel so, I don't know, so sort of naked. Good grief! I'm naked! <gasps> Yikes! I'm naked too! <laughs> That's better. What were we thinking? Uh-oh. I think God's coming. I think we're in trouble. Big trouble. I think we're gonna get it now. We better hide. Uh-oh. Adam, Eve, what are you doing? We're, uh, hiding. Why? Well, we didn't want you to see us. We did a bad thing. We were scared. How did you know these things? Did you eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Well, yes, but it was her fault. She talked me into it. Uh, it wasn't my fault. That uh, serpent talked me into it. I am not happy. You have disobeyed me. We're sorry. We're really sorry. I'm not worried. What can happen to me? You, serpent, will <gasps> crawl on your belly and eat dust forever. Ah, no! You will fear people, and people will fear you. This is your punishment for all time. And you, Adam and Eve, because I trusted you and you disobeyed me, you must leave the garden. Life was easy for you here. But it will not be easy outside. You will have to work hard and your children will have to work hard. You will know what it means to hurt and suffer pain. Here are some garments to keep you warm after you leave the garden. Now go. God put an angel with a flaming sword at the entrance to the garden. So Adam and Eve could never go back. But even though Adam and Eve had disobeyed God, even though they had to leave the garden, God still loved them. I'm sorry, Eve. I'm sorry too, Adam. I guess we're all alone now. <laughs> Not quite alone. And thus began Adam and Eve's new life outside the garden. From then on, their life was filled with joy and sadness, good things and bad. But even though they could never go back to the garden, God did not abandon Adam and Eve. God always watched over them, wherever they went, forever after. Once there was a man named Jacob who lived in the land of Canaan with his 12 sons. The oldest was Reuben, then Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Gad, Asher, Dan, and Naphtali. and finally, Benjamin and Joseph. They were Jacob's children by his second wife, Rachel. Being the youngest, they stayed at home while their brothers worked the pastures. Jacob loved all his sons, but Joseph was his favorite. 
Father, when can I tend the sheep with my brothers? I dreamed it would be any day now. Joseph, you and your dreams. <laughs> you start tomorrow. And to celebrate the big event, I have a surprise for you. Now that he's of age, Joseph will join his older brothers in the fields. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> and this will keep you warm. Oh, Father! It's beautiful! Hey, look at these sleeves! And the colors! Father should have given you a coat like that, Reuben. You're the oldest. Huh. In my dreams. Joseph's brothers were jealous of his gift. It reminded them that their father loved him most of all. But the beautiful coat wasn't the only thing that made them angry at Joseph. Judah, Asher, Simeon! The other night I had a wonderful dream. We were all in a field binding bundles of grain. And my bundle stood upright while yours gathered around mine and bowed down. Bowed down? To you? Huh? Father may worship you, but we don't. Hey, it was just a dream, Simeon. I'm going to bed. You know, last night I dreamed I was a star in the sky, along with 11 other stars. The sun and the moon were there too. And <laughs> they all bowed down to me. Eleven stars? You mean eleven brothers. And we're supposed to bow to you? Who do you think you are? A king? Ugh. If we're the stars, who are the moon and sun? His mother and I. Joseph, you don't think your family should actually worship you? Father, it was just a... Get to sleep. You and your brothers leave early in the morning. If you sleep late, they won't wait for you. Father's got that right. <laughs> and I don't want to hear anything more about dreams. <sighs> the next day, Joseph was left behind. Hello? Uh-oh, the dreamers found us. Get ready to bow, my brothers. Look at him, strut around like a peacock in his new coat. Sometimes I wish we could get rid of him. No, you don't. But I do. If he mentions one more dream, Simeon, he's our brother. We couldn't hurt him. But you've given me an idea. <sighs> what were you trying to do? Lose me? Joseph began to tell his brothers how smart he had been to find them, but they weren't listening. They had other plans. Hey, careful with the coat! Reuben! Judah, no! Ah! We'll keep him down there until we figure out what to do next. Reuben planned to free Joseph when no one was looking and sent him scurrying home. Oh, no!
Reuben and Naphtali rounded up the flock while the others ate their supper. While they ate, a caravan approached. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if we sold Joseph to those merchants? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We'd finally be rid of the pest and have money from the sale. Everyone agreed to the terrible plan. And Joseph was sold for 20 pieces of silver. Brothers, why are you doing this? God? Whatever happens to me, I still have my faith in you. You did what to Joseph? Calm down, Reuben. I'll calm down when you figure out what we're going to tell Father. We have figured it out. We ripped Joseph's coat. We'll just make up some story. We looked everywhere for him, but only found his coat. Oh, Joseph. What has happened to you? My son. The brothers lied, and Jacob believed them. Joseph was taken to Egypt and accused of a crime. He hadn't done anything wrong but he was thrown into the Pharaoh's prison anyway. Even in prison, Joseph trusted in God. God, I didn't do anything bad, but I'm in here for some reason. I know in my heart that it's all part of your plan. Joseph was right, and part of God's plan was to bless him with a special gift, the ability to understand other people's dreams. Oh, what a terrible night. If I only knew what my dream meant. Ah, my dream was four times as confusing as yours. I can tell you what it means. You understand my dreams? Ha! Not I. Only God can explain them. I believe you. Tell me about my dream. I was Pharaoh's cupbearer until I displeased him. In my dream, I saw a grapevine. On the vine were three branches with grapes. I squeezed them into Pharaoh's cup and put the cup in Pharaoh's hand. The three vines mean that in three days, Pharaoh will set you free and you'll be his cupbearer again. Thank you, Joseph. No, thank God, my friend. And when you're free, please tell Pharaoh about me. Tell him I shouldn't be in this awful place. I promise, I promise. Oh, enough about you. I'm next. In my dream, I had three baskets on my head. In the top basket were baked goods for Pharaoh. Suddenly, three birds came and ate everything out of the basket. What's that all about? In three days, you will also leave this prison. I knew it. I'm too important to stay here any longer. Wait, there's more. Everything you own will be taken away, and you will be given Pharaoh's harshest punishment. I'm sorry. Everything Joseph said came true, but the cupbearer forgot to tell Pharaoh about him. Joseph stayed in prison for two long years. Then one day, Thank <laughs> you. 
Oh, what a strange dream. Pharaoh met with the wisest man in his kingdom. Maybe they could understand his dream. But not one of them had an answer. Then the cupbearer remembered his promise to Joseph. Oh, Pharaoh, there is a very wise man in your prison who might explain your dream. Joseph, I dreamed that I was standing on the banks of the Nile when seven fat cows came out of the water. Then seven skinny cows came out of the river. And suddenly, the skinny cows ate the fat cows. <laughs> what does it mean? My God is telling you what he plans to do. The seven fat cows mean that there will be seven years with plenty of crops and food for everyone. But the seven skinny cows mean that after that, for seven years, no crops will grow and your people will have no food. Oh, this is horrible, terrible. No, Pharaoh. God has sent you this message so that you can prepare. Build barns to save some of the food that grows in the seven years of plenty. Your people will have plenty to eat. It is true. You are filled with the Spirit of God. This is the wisest man in my kingdom. We'll build these barns and save our food. And there is only one man who I trust to do such an important job. This man, Joseph. Joseph went right to work. And soon the barns were bursting with grain and filled with cattle. But Joseph's greatest achievement was that the people loved him. God had helped Joseph do these wonderful things and Joseph never forgot to thank him. Seven years later, the terrible drought that Joseph had warned about arrived. No crops grew anywhere, not even in Joseph's old home, Canaan. We're out of food, Father. There's a wise leader in Egypt who has stored food for seven years. He's selling it to anyone who needs it. Then we'll go meet with him and buy his grain. Not Benjamin. I want him safe here with me. Joseph recognized his brothers. Bless you, great one. But they didn't recognize him, so he pretended to be a stranger. Where are you from? Canaan, great one, seeking food for our family. You're spies. No, we're brothers from a family of 12. Please believe me. Liar, there are only 10 of you. One brother was killed, and Benjamin, the youngest, was left at home. Hmm. I'll sell you my grain, but to prove that you are innocent and honest, bring this younger brother of yours the next time you come. I am going to keep one of you here until you return. 
Do you promise? We promise. God is punishing us for selling Joseph into slavery. He pleaded with us, and we betrayed him. <clears throat> I have no more time for you. Take your grain and go. And remember your promise. Father, we had no choice. Oh, Simeon, my son, a prisoner in Egypt. But look, Father, we got the grain. Hey, my money's here in the sack. Now we'll be accused of being thieves as well as spies. Jacob didn't want to lose another son to Egypt. So the family tried to save their food. But soon, it was all gone. We're leaving for Egypt. And we must take Benjamin. No. He'll wind up in prison like Simeon. We promised, Father. If Benjamin doesn't come, Simeon will stay in prison. And the Egyptian ruler won't sell us his grain. Benjamin will come home unharmed. I promise. If he doesn't, Judah, I'll die of sadness. Is your father well? Yes, sir. Good. God has blessed you. And you kept your promise, so I'll keep mine. Then the brothers left, but Joseph had told his servant to secretly place his silver cup in one of their sacks. Stop! Why do you repay good with evil? One of you has stolen my silver cup! Oh, I don't understand. Oh, no. no. For this crime, you will remain here in Egypt as my slave. Oh, no, 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 no. Please, if Benjamin doesn't return home with us, our father will die of grief. He stays. No, no! Take me instead! No, me. Please, Great One. When you threw me down that well, you meant it to be a bad thing. But in the end, God has turned it into something good. I came to Egypt and helped keep a nation from starving. It's me, Benjamin. Joseph. It's true, I'm Joseph. Oh, can't you tell it's me? Look closer and you'll see The eyes of your lost brother I am so glad to have my family gathered here It's so good to know you're near Thank you.
Gather your families and our father and come live with me in Egypt. Joseph, God be praised. You're alive and well. Joseph and his family were never apart again. And God, who helped them survive the famine, raised up a great nation from this family. So Joseph learned that even when bad things happen, God can turn them into something good. <laughs> 